Hey Ivy Environmental students, today we're going to be talking about soil conservation techniques. Let's get started. So last time we were talking about soil degradation, the different things that could go wrong. Here we're going to be talking about different ways to solve some of those issues. The first conservation technique is going to be about how we till the soil. So tillage is usually something that has the goal of reducing soil erosion or restoring the soil's fertility. Remember erosion is the movement of soil either by wind or water and that fertility refers to how healthy the soil is. Are there things growing in it? Are there also many nutrients in the soil? So conventional tilling, meaning um, how most farmers in modern days do this, would, they would have a very expensive um, kind of tractor that would plow um, the land, digging into the soil and kind of pulling it bare. And because it's bare after the fall, all winter long when it's snowing and raining and a lot of water and wind is going past it, there's gonna be all sorts of erosion, meaning the topsoil layer is going to pretty much almost be lost all winter long. This is very, very bad for soil erosion and fertility even though the farmer is hoping that they're helping the situation. Plus it's using fossil fuels and the uh, technology can be expensive. So conservation tillage can either be minimum tillage or maybe the potentially the farmer will decide not to till at all. Both things are considered conservation tillage. The hope is not to disturb the soil and if they do do it as little as possible and they'll still continue to plant crops potentially. Um, it is still potentially going to be expensive because the equipment to do the conservation uh, tillage which will usually put some sort of um, holes in the soil to aerate it, it will be expensive but it hopefully will have more crop yields and it'll be better for the soil in the long run. However sometimes because of the way it works it may affect the plants which might have it require more herbicides and pesticides. So that's our first concept conservation technique. The following slides have other techniques that are going to also help erosion and fertility of the soil. Here's our next technique. Our next technique is all about terracing. Think about this like staircases. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Terracing refers to steep, uh, converting the steep slope of a hill to almost like staircases and it will follow the contour of the land. So if there's a curvature, that will be the same shape of these staircases. They're usually very broad and flat. Um, the nice thing about this is it'll help retain water for crops rather than having the water run off the land causing erosion and a transfer of those nutrients. So little runoff is good. It'll also be kind of tough if we're evaluating this process because to make these terraces, imagine being the person who has to dig these staircase-like shapes. That's a lot of energy or manpower. And if we're not doing it by manpower, we're doing it with fossil fuels and machinery, which could potentially be expensive. So this is really good and we can kind of think of Incas or Aztecs when we see this type of shape, but it is very difficult to get these set up even though it's very good. So that's our second technique, let's keep going. The third technique is contour plowing. Contour means following the shape of the land. So here must be a hill and we're following that shape. And as the farmer plows or plants the crops, they'll follow the, the shape of the land as they do that. This is gonna help the uh, the plants hold the soil and slow the runoff because we're following the shape of the land rather than having oops, straight lines that don't necessarily follow what the soil naturally would do. The next conservation technique is called strip cropping. Think about strips as in rows or stripes. This would be planting alternate, alternate uh, strips um, of different crops such as corn alternating with beans or legumes, or we could have corn alternating with grass. We always want the second thing, um, which might not be our normal monoculture. This would potentially be our monoculture if we weren't doing this. Um, we would want this thing to either help the soil somehow, such as adding nitrogen, because this guy's a nitrogen fixer, or grass, which would really be great at holding the soil together. So really the all overall point is by having these strips we can reduce runoff or erosion because these in-between lanes of the better plant instead of just having one monoculture will hopefully catch that extra runoff or erosion. Furthermore those rows that are now extra compared to natural um, 
likely just what most people do monoculture, they might help prevent pests from spreading to each of the other rows. Lastly, having different rows could potentially, if they're different heights, help reduce wind and therefore the wind erosion. So here we go, there's our strips. Next, we have alley cropping. Think about being in an alley in um, a city. In an alley, you have big buildings next to yourself and you're kind of in the lower area. So here, we have big trees as the alleys where the crops are the lower section. So let's say we continue having our corn or our strawberries here. The nice thing is we can actually have dual purpose with these alleys with the trees and the shrubs potentially having another use. So these trees and shrubs are going to pr provide some shade. They're also going to help um, reduce evaporation and water loss in the whole area because they're going to hold the water and the soil better. Um, and that means the soil will stay moist and it could we could do this in a drier place compared to what we might do if we weren't doing alley cropping. Furthermore, we can actually have these trees be something we could use for wood. We can use the trees eventually if we cut them down for mulch or manure. We can also put these as apple trees, for instance, and we would get fruit from them. So this allows us to have multiple things on our farm, which is called a polyculture, once again, instead of a monoculture, which is not that great. Lastly, we could potentially even use these for not just food for humans, but we could use it for food for livestock. Next technique. This is going to be very similar to uh, alley cropping, except instead of having these kind of rows of trees, our trees are going to be in big chunks and they're going to be all around my big crop field. This is going to help protect us from the wind. It's also known then as a windbreak. It's going to have the same benefits as alley cropping, so I'm not going to bore you to tears by repeating them. Here's a really cool picture of these windbreaks in a real area. These windbreaks are really good at hopefully keeping a lot of the uh, wind wind erosion from entering a stream, which wouldn't be good for the stream either. So let's describe some uh, ways soil conditioners could um, restore soil fertility. You might first be asking yourself, what the heck is a soil conditioner? Well, a soil conditioner is a compound that partially restores important soil nutrients that might have been lost by erosion, leaching, or harvesting. Harvesting means when we're actually taking the crop from the soil, such as taking the corn out or taking the potato out of the soil when we're about to eat it. Remember, leaching means that we are having some compounds actually trickle further down in the soil. So um, what are some examples of conditioners? Well, just like how you condition your hair to help kind of make it healthier, we condition our soil often, even um, at home or big farms. So some farmers are going to use synthetic fertilizers, which aren't so great. We're going to really focus on the good stuff, the organic fertilizers. These are made from plant or animal products that are going to be biodegradable. Since they're biodegradable, we can compost them. They might even be manure. This is going to be really healthy for the soil because it's going to help the soil texture and structure, which we've learned about in our first podcast on soil. It's going to help make uh, living organisms want to live there more because there's going to be more nutrients, more decomposers, more nutrient cycling, all good things by adding natural organic fertilizer. The next thing is we're going to add lime. Now this isn't lime juice, silly goose. This is adding um, something that's going to help buffer or change the pH. Specifically, it's going to help the pH rise, which is called alkaline or becoming a little bit more basic. Now let's say that there's a little bit of acid rain, and we'll learn more about this later in the year, but acid rain happens because of all the industries near farms. So that's going to make the soil become a little acidic. Plants don't all like that. So this is a way to kind of neutralize the acidity in the soil. And no, once again, it's not lime juice. It's actually going to look like this powdery stuff that sometimes you already see in soil that you buy from the store. So that's it for today. You made it. I know there's a lot of different things. They're very similar, but they're all going to help farmers and improve their soil. And in class, we're going to look at specific case studies for different farming techniques, subsidence, and uh, commercial farming, and think about how they're applying these different conservation techniques for different degradation problems. Wonderful job. See you in class.